Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are, we are going to review this 2024 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss Edition. And also, please do stick around until the end to like find out if it's actually worth buying one or not. So, right off the bat, uh, it doesn't really look that nice to me. The main reason is that Chevy put a lot of uh, plastic in the front. So, like, all of this is all plastic. Like, it doesn't look that good, especially on this off-road orientated mid-size truck. We do have tow hooks over here. But once again, they will look way better if they were like a red color or, or like it was like in like in a, diff like in a different position. How does your two has it? Second, this has no skid plates in the front. I'm pretty sure they, they are standard. No, I'm pretty sure they're optional, but not standard. The Z02 and the Z71 is optional. Sorry, it's standard for the Z02 and the Z71, but for this, I believe it's optional. We do have our Trail Boss badging over here. And we have this 18 inch. These wheels are really nice. So 18 inch rims. We do have all train Wrangler tires. And this does has the two inch extra lift suspension kit, which comes with the Trail Boss. We have this beautiful blue color. But once again, a lot of plastic all over the place. It doesn't really look that nice with the plastic going around. Trail Boss badging in the back. We do have a big heavy duty hitch. This can tow up to 7,700 uh, 7, pounds. Here we have our trailer connectors. So this has like the best in class towing capabilities among all mid-size SUVs. This is not power lease, like they have it in the Silverado. I wish it was, but it's not. And then it, it like opens up to this, I believe it's four and a half feet. We do have tow uh, strap hooks. And there's no built-in power. I believe that is available, but not standard, especially in this trail bus trim. Under the hood, we have this 2.7 liter Turbo Max four cylinder. This makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. It is actually phenomenal that we make this much power out of out of an out of an a four cylinder. And then this is paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. We also have the two-speed transfer case. This is four by four. Of course, this is going to be for off-roading. This engine is actually really really good, and this is the same engine which also comes in the CT uh 5v and then also no sorry the ct4v and then also the same engine which comes in the chevy silverado so starting with the interior i'm gonna be honest to me this is just disappointing it's all hard plastic like they could have improved a bit i'm gonna show you the price of this at the end but still like they could have improved on this thing this is just hard plastic just hard plastic like this is kind of soft touch but it's still hard plastic all over the dash it's hard it's like all hard plastic and it just like ruins this truck i mean we do have really good performance numbers all that but then from the interior they just ruined it by just putting cheap plastic all over, over the place but yes it is improved in the zr2 and the z71 but still like they should have done their job properly uh, we do have this steering wheel. This is also not leather wrap. This is like some kind of like an different material. It is still, I mean, it's still soft, but is it, it is not leather wrapped. Uh, it's not heated either, but we do get adaptive cruise, cruise control. Uh, we do have a lane keep assist, automatic braking. And then we also have this really nice Gehiki cluster. This is like really nice. Uh, we can customize it. We also have different features for it, but I can't access it. Unfortunately, the hood is, I like left it open and then I can't, I can do anything if the hood is open. It's just like a safety feature they have. And then over here, we have this really nice display. Just like all GM vehicles, this is really nice. Uh, it does has a wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We also have built-in Google Maps, which is in a way uh, good 
like you know way better improvement compared to the compared to the factory nav because it does get over the air updates uh traffic monitoring all that kind of stuff so you know, really nice job with the infotainment system um And we also have Alexa, and we also have a dedicated off-roading uh, pages. That is also excellent. It also gives you your, uh, like your flex total, your flex total height. You they like also give you the coordinates where you are, our drive mode, and it also gives you like a you know, really detailed uh, view of your train. And then at the same time, it's also giving a detail on your uh on your like tire pressure so that's really good you can also reset the pitch and all that kind of stuff and then there is three modes basically one is overlanding because you do need different equipment for like a different needs and then in baja mode it does also give you your your flex steering Angle. and it is like really really precise the way it works so really nice job with all that and then we also have the transfer case it's currently in auto let's put it into four low now it's in a four low we also have two high four high and four low but we do need to put it into neutral before we can change it into four low um, and for the mode selections down here all we have to do is just spin this and it does change the mode and then we also get really nice animations. So we have tow pole, train, normal, off-roading, really nice. And then it like also like changes uh, how the vehicle reacts and also the transfer case and all, all that kind of good stuff. Down here, we do have our climate controls. Also pretty basic. They could have done a better job, but they didn't. So me personally, I would choose the GMC Canyon. It is way better. That's my opinion. But moving on, so really nice climate controls. Not the best, but they still did a really good job with these switches. They are they are just like blended in, but it is not dual climate control. We have two air vents. We have our engine auto on start start button, flashers, and then our lane keep assist down here. Um, uh, Saham models do have wireless charging. It is uh, not standard in this trim, which is the trail ball. So it is available, but it's not standard. We have a USB-C port and a USB-A port. Down here is our climate control selector, and then also our four low, four high electronic parking braking. And we also have this gear shifter. And we also have HD clear quality rear view camera, just like all GM products they make really good uh, rear view cameras so we do get different we do get like really nice angles so one is just like a normal angle backwards but like since I have the trunk uh, since I have the tailgate open it does look like a little weird I'm um, sorry about that and then we also have like a dedicated view when you are hooking up the trailer and then if you want to drive it in manual then we can put it in four low but the thing is we have to use these switches so they could have just added paddle shifters but they just didn't add them so we gotta use these uh, so we do have two cup holders here once again hard plastic and more storage in here I mean, it just like feels really cheap from the inside, and then now I understand why people don't like it. They could have made it better, but they didn't. The quality from the inside is not that great. It like feels that you're sitting in a Toyota instead of like a forty-five thousand, forty-five thousand dollar truck. So this costs forty-five thousand, as spec has tested right now and then also we get no power seats they are all are manual so in the back I have pretty decent amount of room 
and decent amount of headroom as well. Chargers, just two air vents. We do have two cup holders, but it's all just hard plastic. Like they really did not try to make this any better. And just look at these like door handles. They're just, just, it's just like hard plastic everywhere. Um, we get no center console in the back. It's pretty basic. All we have for, all we have is just, that's it. Other than that, it's pretty basic. Nothing special in the back. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe. The final price of this vehicle as tested was $47,000 plus all the accessories and that is before the taxes. So uh, after taxes, it will probably cost you close to fifty-three grand, and it's not worth it in my opinion. If you want to get it, just get the ZR2 or just get the GMC. But uh, other than and please do like and, sub and subscribe and I do come out with new content every week so please do stay updated uh, and then and then if you want to like, support this channel further please uh, do join our channel membership it will like allow us to like invest more time in like European cars and also to like get new equipment thank you